They are so big, so, so big. This is my hand. Can you see? What are they? Pavodoyon. Hmm. So it's a puppy. It's a puppy type. So gigantic. Hmm. There's kids running everywhere. Everything's been closed for so long, everyone is out.
I want to talk about this. I asked them if I could take a video in the shop and they said, well, you know us, the kind of healing practices that are alternative, we should be staying shush, we should be timid. And I think that's the problem we have here. We have real powerful things. And we're not talking about it because the system, fuck that. Mm. Welcome, thank you for being here and let's start our second episode in the Celtic series because we now got confirmation that I can pronounce it Celtic because it used to be pronounced Celtic <laughs> with an S and if you want to pronounce it with a K that's also correct. You got the choice baby! Alright, so I want to start with picking a card from my OM deck that you might have seen in the first episode. Please click on that card link so that you can catch up on what I presented. Many different paths, many different ways into the Celtic realm. And let's go! So what witch plant wants to <laughs> be with us today? That's a lot of cards. Let's just put it back. Way too much. We want one message. Just one. Just one. I actually added cards to this deck. Because there's a few plants that are not in this deck and yet they are part of the OM. They are called the Four Fader. Ooh. Okay. Oh. Alright. I tend to I tend to witness this card a lot and I think it's very interesting that I'm dressed in black as well today, which is not something that happens a lot. But anyway, let me try to focus this. Yes. The black thorn. Good. Let me read you the text and then we'll present the image. So this is from the deck by Liz and Colin Murray. And it's illustrated by Vanessa Card. <laughs> Vanessa Card, right? And she makes cards. Um, <laughs> and let me read Blackthorn. There we go. And I'm going to translate in English because the book is in French. But the way that you say it in all Gaelic is strife. Strife, which also has this word of, you know, strife, having a fight, having a... A conflict with someone. So we're talking about the tree and each tree is an archetype for something. It's it's a form, it's a language and that's what we talked about in the first episode where those symbols here, the one that you see in exactly the middle, is part of an alphabet. Right? So let me let me just read the text and then we'll see. <laughs> so the strife is a tree from winter. The fruits are called prunes and they don't they don't uh, mature and become good enough to eat until the first winter icing moments and the flowers are very white and they open quite early on even before the apparition the apparition the appearance of the first leaves um, so when spring was cold, when you had a spring that was cold, um, there would be called a winter with blackthorn, that tree. Then we can talk a little bit more about it, but anyway, um, <laughs> they, they've been using for witchcraft the needles from the blackthorn to do witchcraft, black witchcraft. And they used it to pierce wax candles, wax images, wax figurines of people. All right. Um, hmm. Okay, so Blackthorn is a card that represents really strong actions in your life and being um, having your life and your life path being impacted by external influences. So you should be taking a considera into consideration the fact that this is happening. Maybe you're thinking that you don't have a choice, but 
whatever the options are, they're not that um, disappointing as you might think. And we encourage you to let the events take you. Just flow, follow the river and let yourself see that you don't have to react so strongly to events, to things that happen to you. Even if this change, if you're having a change in your life and it's quite disorientating um, and maybe a little bit traumatizing or just very impressive, uh, please accept that sometimes life has problems and there's always lessons and what you have to do is put yourself back into the decision seat. Like you actually have options and you're never really a victim, just choose something. Please don't persist in having a negative point of view. You know, the glass, the glass is always half empty, but always half full as well. And yeah, try to change your ways, try to accept the difficulties for what they are. They're not here to ruin you, they're just here um, and you're facing them. And please accept what's happening, which doesn't mean consent. It just means accept, like recognize that it's here. Don't constrict, don't force yourself to not be in the flow with the events as they happen in order to be taking those decisions. And after that, you'll be faced with a renewal, a phase of, uh, you'll be purified from this process. So I wanted to talk about this. I wanted to just have a card to start the beginning of, um, of our video because what we're talking about today is densities, dimensions, consciousness. So consciousness is life, it's energy itself, it's the creator, it's God, it's goddess, it's everything. And that consciousness doesn't have limits, but we live in very different structures, different universes, different densities, different dimensions. And so we process that consciousness, that life, that vibration at different levels. And we human are currently operating within the third dimension and um, the third density. So what's the difference between density and dimension? I would love to refer you to a video by Aaron Atke, where he's been talking on different podcasts about the difference between densities and dimensions as, um, as his studies led him to evolve and develop this ID from the law of one, the Ra contact. I highly recommend you to watch those videos, but if you don't, I want to just kind of sum it up. So we think of 4D, 5D and all of those things, and we don't really know that there's a difference between the D of dimension and the D of density. So I'm going to just give you a little wrap up on it. human body operating at the third density, which means we're able to understand a lot of different things. Our consciousness is able to speak a language, it's able to understand uh, calculus, it's understanding translations of different languages, it's able to read a book, or read a, a series of symbols and make up a sound in our mind and, and have connections, cognitive understandings of what's what the symbol mean and what they're, uh, you know, transferring to us. and all the things that humans do. Things that, for example, animals or plants or rocks can't really do, which doesn't mean there's a hierarchy, you know, we're talking about first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. There's no hierarchy, it's just different states of being. And by talking about plants here, I wanted to talk about the second density, which is the plants. The second density, because the first density is minerals, rocks, uh, the actual dense, dense um, bodies and they're not moving especially they they're moving but extremely slowly you know for example crystals that form they take thousands of years and plants are growing quite rapidly compared to you know rocks for example but it's it's also another type of consciousness and with the celtic path and with starting with those cards i want to talk about the second density the plants the consciousness of plants so i would love to talk about densities in the context of just what they are which as 
the video that I mentioned would just say, and then the Ra contact and the low of one. The speed of vibration of photons, photons is light, light is the wisdom, it's the, you know, the love and light, it's the wisdom, it's the information. And, you know, as a photographer, I really see this as, you know, the, the light is just information, it's pixels. So when we have this information, this light, it enters different vessels. So when it enters a plant, it's gonna create photosynthesis, which will create more of the growth of the plant. It will create oxygen and transform carbon and uh, dioxide, carbon dioxide. Yeah, yeah, carbon dioxide. And it's the same with us. For example, um, when I receive light as a human body, I'm gonna create mitochondria. Mitochondria is energy and it's going to feed and um, and made the life within me with the organs, with the blood, with everything. So densities is just the speed of vibration of photons and the denser the, the information, the denser the body, the more information is going to be found within that light. And that's when we see that the development of psychic gifts and psychic tools and the evolution of this physical body. So. Being in the third density means specific things within the metaphysical world and that's also something that we could talk about for hours and hours but I really want to dive back into the cleanse. So, for example, when I connect with plants, when I work with plants, I'm going to connect to a different state of consciousness and I'm going to have to adapt to the information the way it's been delivered to me and that's again not to say there's a hierarchy because absolutely no hierarchy because no one is the better it's just different and when i mentioned the first video that when i talk with plants i gather information information has been stored within those plants i also have to tap into that flow and that um get used to that structure of consciousness in order to distill the information within and see what could be a conversation between me and the plant or me and the concept, me and the consciousness because basically everything is God, everything is light, everything is consciousness. So when I talk with the plant I'm just receiving information from the God, from Goddess, from the Creator, from the life itself through the filter of one of those plants. Just like when you're watching a video on YouTube and you're receiving um, light or love or wisdom or um, expressions of life through the filter of that uh, person who channels, who's on the channel, the YouTuber. So it's it's the same. And what does it do? Well, for me, it helps me to reconnect to, as I said, my roots and um, the magic within my blood. Because again, I told you, I'm 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 coming from this heritage, the South heritage. And uh, that's that's what I wanted to do. So what does it look like? It looks like forest bathing. It looks like taking care of my plants, drinking distilled energetical plant essences. For example, I'm just over with the willow one. I um, I think it's tomorrow is going to be the last one. I can't even find it within this. I, I think I'm going to have to open it and just dunk it down because I'm done working with willow and then I'll select another plant. So those were the back flower essences. And we're back. <laughs> and yeah, that's that's what I wanted to share. The fact that when you communicate with plants when you enter that realm and you create a resonance between you and the vegetal world it's it's a conversation with god it's a conversation with life i think there is well there's a deep remembering because the path of the soul, the journey of the soul, has been delving into the different densities, the different dimensions, and in past life regressions that I've been operating for people, I've had people who woke up back from those regressions, from those uh, trance moments where they were a rock, where they were liquid, where they were a plant. And that's something that's interesting because 
I'm not gonna state it as a truth and say we were all rocks or we were all plants at some point. I think it's gonna resonate with specific people, but I know that it is a possibility and I wanted to offer that up to you. And considering not the hierarchy, but more like the flow of life and the flow of those ideas of densities and dimensions, um, I do think that reconnecting to roots and connecting with the natural world is reconnecting to a version of yourself a version of yourself that's operating right now operating in the concept of past if you want to believe in past present future or um, something that's happening parallelly uh, alongside this current life within the multiverse within a universe within parallel dimensions within this whole realm that could be again opened up for thousands of videos and we would still not really um, begin to scratch the surface or or feel tangibly sure that this is it. So I just wanted to share that because I've, um, I've really enjoyed my contact and furthering my contact with plants. I've, I've been talking to plants now as a person who has house plants and that's something that I used to do when I was a kid. I used to talk to trees in the forest, trees that were attached to the soil and I would spend a lot of time on my own with trees, with the grass, with the insects and, and really feel the deep connection, that deep love, that deep resonance. And now that I'm doing that to my plants, I can see their growth, I can see they're resonating with me and I can see them expand and blossom and open up and that's that's beautiful. So I'm gonna take you on a few rides across France, across Paris, where I've visited in order to fully take in spring. So as when I mentioned my vlog, the April vlog in Paris, I was opening myself to feel the energy of rebirth and, and that spring after suffering the, the winter and the death of the natural world that I'm connected to while well, I was trying to do the same with spring. So that's, that's what I'm doing. I also want to point out something that might not be super famous or super known, but our body, our nervous system looks like branches and roots. Our body is very similar to a tree's body. And that's a circuitry that we can recognize. And I think it's fascinating to see how we can interact and how we can um, find healthy properties within our contact with plants, within our meditation with plants, when we take care of the nervous system or when we connect with plants, we can see the effects on the nervous system when we do. I also want to add a little last thing and I've done meditations for this Celtic path I've done a lot of different things that you can check I'm gonna put the cards here so that if if you're wanting to have an experience right now from the midst of being in your home or watching this on your phone you can right now do it 10 seconds later there is a definite thing that happens when when the energy field is different so there is a difference between being next to one plant and next to a few plants and then within a forest and that's something that i really encourage you to do to have those forest bathing something that the japanese have a specific word for and that's that's allowing your aura to open up and be <laughs> within the receiving part of the plants and having that resonance you can see your heart chakra expand you can feel um, you can feel that you're opening up to yourself and that you're considering the past and the present and the future and that you're really in a, you're being bathed, you're being enveloped and I really encourage you so I, I have a few you know images, a few videos where you can feel the energy from them. I love this place. I just love it. I've, I've been here so many times. I got the card so I can come back whenever I want. All right. 
I'm gonna flip you. Can you see that beauty? And I encourage you to go and find the nearest grove, the nearest place where you can be surrounded by trees. Something that is used for energy healing is branches. So usually from cut branches from trees and they're being used as a broom or as a hitting fan that you're going to tap onto your body in order to heal and that's something that I've seen across different countries but I actually love walking underneath a tree where the branches are quite low and letting the alive branches touch my skull, touch me, brush my face and, and allowing that energy to be an exchange between me and them. I'm always going to give back water or reiki or some kind of um, piece of me, of my energy, for them to digest and do whatever they want with. But I love walking underneath trees and I really encourage you to try that because it's an exchange. There is there is something that happens. And we don't have to call it like a purification, a healing or something. It's We can just call it a conversation, a creation, something. Letting things within your aura is affecting you. So when you're um, within a forest or where, when you're within water in a swimming pool in the sea, you're interacting with the natural world by letting yourself be a part of nature, be nature itself again, and letting your aura, of course, change shape and expand or contract. But there's an exchange, there's something. I wanted you to know that this happens, this is... Uh, a natural thing that you can observe and the best is to maybe stop listening to this and just go out 
taking the sun, taking the moonlight, taking the ground underneath your feet, take in the trees. And one exercise that I want to leave you with is go in your streets, go in your neighborhood and witness which tree is there, which trees are planted. Take notice, try to find their names. There is an app called PlantSnet where you take a photo and it tells you the Latin name, it tells you the tree, it shows you other photos, uh, where they are in the world, on the map, and that's... Try to create a connection. Try to see if some of the trees are going to be opening themselves to you, or if they are closing, if they don't want to be a part of this, and respect that, ask for consent. Uh, don't just try to meditate with them, or see which one is opening themselves for you to sit underneath. And if you shall um, have an exchange where you take a piece of their bark or a, a branch or leaf, please, please ask for consent energetically and wait for an answer. Don't just grab onto things. Um, wait. Maybe after a few times of meditating there, you'll see a chunk of bark on the ground next to you. And then you can ask and then you can uh, collect it and bring it back to your altar or back to you. Whatever you want to do. Something you can also do is create vibrational uh, water. So you come with like a glass of water and you're just going to let it within the aura of the plants that you want to um, be connected with and then keep that water and spray it within your surroundings, in your house or on you. And that's something that you can do. Something that I highly encourage you to try because it's, it's the least um, harmful. It's the least... Um, that looks like capitalism, you know, taking the resources and, and, and just like wrapping things in the name of spirituality, which wouldn't be spiritual. Like walk the talk <laughs> and and then slow down and then see what comes up to you. And if you drink tea or if you drink infusions, um, look up what they mean, look up what the medicinal properties are and you might find that they're communicating a specific message to you. Maybe something specific is happening and the plants are telling you. Right now, you do need a bit of calm. Right now, it would be better to stop and reflect or to be put forward in action. So, <laughs> yeah. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. If you have questions or if you have information that you want to share, please leave a comment and like and subscribe. And if you want to support this channel, um, please share this video. Please send it to your loved ones. Please send it to the people who might be interested in it. And if you want to be introduced to another subject, I'm doing a series on Mary Magdalene. And that's, that's something that I'm going to keep on building as well as this series on the Celtic Path. Thank you so much for being here. Take care.